this free response question that you can find in the binder is a fairly straightforward Atwood's machine problem where the pulley has some mass. In fact, it has a mass of 3m. And you have two blocks connected on its edges, and one's going to go up and one's going to go down, and they're asking you about the acceleration of the blocks. Um, and so these are the types of problems. These are very common types of problems. So you definitely need to make sure that you understand how to do these and how to set everything up. And you've been doing quite a few of these in the homework. And one of the things that I want you to see in this is that from what you did on the homework, that would give you, you know, the majority, like 12 of the points. And so they seem like they're long problems, but that would be an entire, almost an entire free response question. This one is a, a fairly simple version of it, except for some people, the thing that's the most difficult about it is they don't give you any numbers to plug in. It's all variables. In the end, that's actually a little bit nicer of them. It's pretty easy to do the algebra, um, but some people don't like that. So we have this pulley of mass 3m, and it's got a radius r. It's on this stand. They give you the rotational inertia of the pulley, so it's not just a simple disk. It, it's just something that they give you. Um, you have this cord that's supporting two blocks. The cord does not slip on the pulley. So after the block pulley system is released from rest, the pulley begins to rotate. Um, the fact that they said that, that's important. That's letting you know that when you look at the tensions in the two cords, the tension on one side is not going to equal the tension on the other side. The 2M is going to go down. The M is going to go up. This pulley is going to rotate around clockwise. So I'm going to make all of those my positive direction. So for the 2M, down is positive. For the pulley, clockwise is positive. For the block of mass M, up is positive. And this means that this tension on this side is going to be bigger than the tension on this side. And that's because if, there, if it's not, if it's equal, then that pulley doesn't rotate. And if it's less, the pulley rotates the other way. So T2 is greater than T1. But you have to recognize that you need to use two different tensions. And so on, draw and label all the forces acting on each block. Well, block 1 has a weight of mg. And it has a rope pulling up with a tension T1. Block 2 has a weight of 2m times g, and it has an upward force t2. And again, t2 is bigger than t1. Use the symbols identified in part a to write out each of the following. So that's one of the reasons that it was important for me to have t1 and t2 in my equations. So again, just as a reminder, I have this up top. Up is positive for this one. Down is positive for this one. So write the equations of translational motion, Newton's second law for each of the two blocks. That's F equals MA. So for block M, the net force is tension, which is positive because it's in the positive direction from what I labeled, minus the weight. And the net force is mass times acceleration. So T1 minus mg equals ma. For the block of mass 2m, for that one, my net force is, the so weight is what's in the positive direction, so that's 2mg, and the tension is in the negative direction, and the net force is 2m times my acceleration, so 2ma equals 2mg minus t2. Write the analogous equation for the rotational motion of the pulley. So just so I don't have to scroll up, I had t2 pulling on this side. I had t1 pulling on this side. 
both of them were a distance r away. So my net torque equals I alpha. So my net torque is the torque due to tension 2, so that's R times T2. And again, that was the positive direction. Minus R times T1 equaled the rotational inertia of 3 halves m R squared. times the angular acceleration. In fact, th this I had said before that this pulley was not just a simple disk. It actually is. Um, a simple disk is a half mr squared, but this has a mass of 3m. So this was a half times 3m times r squared. Not that that matters. They gave it to you, and so that's all you need to worry about. Um, for this, it's okay to just leave it like that. Um, I'm eventually going to use the fact that the linear acceleration is r times the angular acceleration to um, combine these together. But that would be full credit for those two parts. Part C asks you to put all of that together. And so I need T1 and T2 by themselves. So T1, again, that was an equal sign that was there. T1 was MA plus MG. And T2 was 2MG minus 2MA. So putting those things together, I have R times T2, which is 2M g minus 2ma minus r times t1, which is ma plus mg, equals 3 halves mr squared. And since I want acceleration, I need to get rid of this angular acceleration. So I need to substitute in a over r. So I can, again, on this side, I can factor an R out. And the reason that I did that is because this R divides out one of these R's. This R divides out this other R. And so that's just going to simplify things a lot. I don't have to carry through all of my R's. It's not a big deal if you don't do that. But especially when you're working with these algebra problems, it, it makes things a little bit easier. So you have 2mg minus 2ma minus ma minus mg equals 3 halves ma. So combining things together. 2mg minus mg just gives me mg. Negative 2ma minus ma gives me minus 3ma equals 3 halves ma. So adding 3ma to both sides, so that's adding 6 halves ma to both sides. That's going to give me m g equals 6 halves plus 3 halves, which is 9 halves. My m's divide out. And I get an acceleration that's 2g over 9. So this should be less than free fall acceleration, and it is. g is free fall acceleration, so this is 2 ninths of what it would be if it was in free fall. Determine the tension in the segment of the cord attached to the block of mass m. So this is find T1. So up above in green, I have that T1 equals ma plus mg. So that's m times 
2g over 9 plus mg, so that's 9 over 9. So that's going to give me 11mg over 9. Again, 2 ninths plus 9 ninths is going to be 11 ninths. So the tension is 11mg over 9. Again, that we should see if that makes sense. That should be greater than the weight of that block because it was accelerating up, which it is. And then determine the normal force exerted on the apparatus by the table while the blocks are in motion. Again, parts A through D were the ones that we've done in the homework. They're straightforward, you're going through, and so the bulk of the points are just doing all those things, combining all the equations. There's a lot there for you to do, and so that's a big chunk of a free response problem. And again, this is a very common problem for them to ask, and so I would make sure that you know how to do it. Um, there are twists that they can put on it. It's not always a, a disk. So there's a few other things that they can have, but you definitely should know how to do these types of problems. This last part, determine the normal force exerted while the blocks are in motion. I look back up at this. If you look at what I drew, this is find the normal force on this. And so you have you don't have the weights of those blocks pulling down on it. What you have is you have the tension in the rope pulling down on it. So if I just go down below and I have that stand with the pulley and it's sitting on this table, the Forces in the vertical direction have to add up to equal zero. It's not moving up or down at all. It's in, you know, it's in equilibrium. You know, the stand is in equilibrium. And so two of the forces that are acting on it are its weight. The weight of the pulley and the weight of the block. 3mg and 4mg. Again, the common mistake is to say, well, the other two forces are the two weights of those two blocks, so mg and 2mg, and people just add all those together and say that that's the answer. But that's not true, and in some ways they were trying to lead you to that answer by having you calculate that tension. You have T1 pulling on this side, and you have T2 pulling on this side. So the normal force is going to have to add up to equal it's going to have to equal all those things added together. The normal force is T1 plus T2 plus 3mg plus 4mg. So the normal force is going to be T1, which we just found, 11mg over 9 plus T2. Okay, well they only asked us for T1 in part D, but we could just as easily calculate T2. T2 is going to be 2mg minus 2m times the acceleration. So again, the acceleration was 2g over 9. So all that that I have there is T2. And then this is plus 3mg plus 4mg. So that's 11 ninths mg plus 2mg plus 4 ninths mg plus 3 and 4 is going to be 7 mg. And if you wanted to, uh, honestly, you could leave it that way. You don't need to simplify it anymore. In fact, 
you wouldn't need to simplify it past what I have written in the line above that. Um, 11 ninths plus 4 ninths is going to be 15 ninths. So 2 plus 7 is going to be 9 mg. So if I need that in ninths, that's 81 ninths mg. So that's going to be 96, 96 ninths. So I wouldn't go through and simplify it unless you were trying to kill some time while other people were finishing the AP test. But it would be perfectly fine to leave it the way they had it a couple lines above. But that's what they're asking you to do. Again, that's kind of the last step of the problem. That's do you really understand all of these things? But the Atwood's machine part is an extremely important part, and that's the bulk of the credit. If you don't understand those, make sure that you look at them and work through them and get a lot of practice.